What is going on everybody? It's Dream from Dream Talks here and today what we have on the channel is a new topic of discussion, a new segment on the channel where we're going to talk about one of my guiltiest pleasures. Now growing up, the two things that I liked the most, the three things that I liked the most during my childhood were the Jacksonville Jaguars, WWE, and Big Brother and Survivor. Now, I debated discussing Big Brother and Survivor on the channel for a long time. I don't know why. But I thought Survivor Winners at War would be the most perfect time to start talking about Survivor and Big Brother. Now, why is this so important? It's because it's an all-winner season. Winners from my childhood are going to be playing. And some of the best players of all time are going to be playing for $2 million and to be probably considered the best Survivor player of all time. I mean, you could still debate Sandra might be the best player of all time just based off of her already winning two. And if she wins three, then you might as well cancel the whole entire show as a whole because that would just be straight up ridiculous. Now, before I made this video, um, I was going to be doing a power ranking of all these players, but unfortunately some things got in the way. So I wasn't able to do that. And this video was recorded before I watched the first episode of Survivor Winners at War. So expect a recap episode. And then the next day I'm going to be doing a power ranking of all the remaining players. And since Edge of Extinction is a factor in this season of Survivor, I'm going to be doing an Edge of Extinction ranking. Now the Edge of Extinction ranking is going to be, you know, for the first couple of weeks, pretty slim. Because there isn't going to be that many players that are on the edge at the time. So, expect that list to be small. Expect my list to change from week to week as episodes drop. And please leave no spoilers in the comment section. I want to be surprised each and every week when I watch this great show and this great season of Survivor. So that brings me to the discussion of what we're going to be talking about today. So today what we're going to be talking about is our Survivor Winners at War Fantasy Draft results. Now, if you've never done a fantasy draft, whether it be fantasy football, fantasy basketball, baseball, or even a Survivor Fantasy Draft, basically what it is is you got the poll of 20 people, and you go back and forth, and you draft a player that you think is going to win the season. So I'm going to be going over the draft results. It was with uh, me, Fitz, Jay from Stamper Sports Talk, and Wyatt. Wyatt was in some of my earlier videos. I'm not too sure if you'll remember him, but um, he was in it as well. So we're going to be going pick by pick and discussing um, all those players individually. So it's going to be kind of like a player uh, analysis before the season starts and uh, kind of talk about how I think that they will finish. And we'll go over my draft picks, everybody's draft picks, and kind of give an overall view of how the draft works. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is my Survivor Winners at War draft results. So before we get into this video, it's obvious that we need to address how this draft works. So it was a snake draft. So if you don't know what that means, meaning that uh, round one, it goes picks one, two, three, four, and then picks number four gets back-to-back -back selections. So that's how it went, and then four, three, two, one, and one gets back-to-back -back selections. So that's how a snake draft works. Uh, also, before I dive into this video, I want to give a shout out to, I doubt they're watching this, but uh, Matt Carter from CarterMatt.com and Pritium as well. Those are two guys that really influenced me to get on here and start talking about Survivor and Big Brother. Their content is amazing. Make sure if you're not subscribed to them to go down and subscribe to those channels because they give elite Survivor analysis, elite Survivor videos as well, and uh, really helps fanboys like me uh, get even more excited for this show. So without further ado, let's start off with the draft results. So with the first overall pick in the 2020 Winners at War, the only Winners at War fantasy draft, Wyatt got the first selection and surprisingly went with Nick. Nick Wilson, I think that's his last name. I put first names on here. Hopefully, you know, for all you nerds out there, you guys aren't going to get irritated if I don't say their last names. But Nick was the first overall selection in this draft and I was kind of surprised by that. I think Wyatt's more of a casual fan. I don't think he knows too much about, you know, the former winners that, you know, you could have selected first overall in this pick, in this uh, draft. But I think Nick's a guy that can go far in this season. 
I think there's a lot of meat shields in his way. I think, you know, guys like Boston Rob, girls like Sandra are obviously really big competitors and really big players. So I think Nick has an opportunity to go to the end of the game. But as far as winning the game, I'm not too sure about that. He's going to have to switch up his gameplay a little bit. I've seen him ranked really high in some people's preseason power rankings. I don't know if that's some recency bias, but I just I don't really see a situation where Nick is going to be the winner of this season. But again, I think he really had um, a lot of upside. I think he definitely has potential to kind of not necessarily float to the end, but get to the end because, you know, there's a lot more threats in his way. But he is from a recent season, so some of these older players might just, you know, know how he plays, and that might play to a disadvantage for Nick. But um, Nick is the first overall selection. I was a little surprised. I think he has an opportunity to make it really far and uh, do well. So Nick was the first overall selection. Now the second overall selection was from Jay from Stamper Sports Talk, and he took Wendell. Now, Wendell is a guy that I think is going to win the season. And I've seen a lot of people kind of agree with that statement. I've seen him ranked, you know, really high in people's preseason uh, player rankings for the Survivor winner out, Winners at War. I think with his social game and how, you know, he kind of ran the show. He did run the show uh, alongside Dominic in his original season. But I think Wendell is a guy that has potential to reach the end. He has a great social game. I think he can adapt. And I think he's... One of the best, if not the best, all-around players in this cast for Survivor. So, I think he's my winner pick. You know, I know it's early to give that away, and I was really irritated that uh, Jay snatched him up before me because we had a discussion prior about, you know, who we think is going to win this season, and Wendell was both of our picks, and he ended up picking before me. So, Wendell's going to go to Jay from Stanford Sports Talk, and uh, I think that was a really good pick. I think he's one of the best all-around players that are going to be playing in this season. So then I picked number three, and my pick was the guy that I think actually has the second best chance, and I think is very similar to Wendell, and he has a lot of connections on this cast as well. Jeremy. I picked Jeremy with my third overall pick, and I think he has probably the second or third best odds to win this season. And um, just purely based off of how he played with the meat shield strategy in his original season and second chance, and you know he got to the end with Spencer, which uh, I thought Spencer deserved a lot more votes at the end of that tribal uh, in that final tribal council. I think Spencer played a really good game that season, but Jeremy ended up you know sweeping a lot of votes and ending up winning that season. I think he has another opportunity to do that. He was in a cast of all returning players in his second time, which he won. And I think there's a lot of meat shields out there for him to use in order to advance himself further in the game and advance himself to the end of the game hopefully and win that so he can be my winner pick and help me win what is it 20 bucks win 20 bucks from this fantasy draft so jeremy was the third overall selection so fitz was the last pick he had back-to-back -back picks and the fourth and fifth overall selection was by fitz and he took sarah and tony which I think is a, that's a wild duo to pick in your back-to-back -back picks. He picked two of the uh, most outlandish characters probably in this Winners at War season in Sarah and Tony. Sarah won a really good season in Game Changers. Tony really ran the show uh, when he won his season as well. So these are two, guy, two uh, people, you know, when I say guys too, don't get all upset. Don't get all upset in the comments. These are two people that I think don't really have a great chance of winning. Uh, I think Sarah's really just based off of his, uh, based off of her uh, preseason interviews. I think she's getting a little cocky and thinks she's a lot better than she actually is heading into this season. But if she can play a cutthroat game like she did in Game Changers, she has every opportunity to win this season. You know, she went out there and said, "Who beat Sandra?" You know, she rose her hand, but there was also like eight, nine, ten people that. Also, I guess, can technically say they beat Sandra in that season because they got further than her. I think just saying out loud that you beat Sandra was a little bit, uh, kind of a cocky move, in my opinion. But uh, Sarah, definitely, I don't, I don't think she goes far. I think she's probably the third, fourth eliminated person in this cast. And then you got Tony. And Tony's one of the biggest players in this cast, uh, without a doubt. And he's one of the biggest characters as well. And unless he, you know, completely changes his game up, which he has said in the uh, preseason interviews that he's looking to do, he's looking to kind of change how he plays this season a big, uh, of Survivor. I'm going to do that a lot of Survivor. And, you know, really kind of play more of a low-key game, 
make sure he's not a target, make sure more people make targets out of themselves, then maybe he can do it. But uh, hopefully he doesn't do any more bunkers, because I, I think the spy bunkers and game changers kind of kind of threw him off, and he was obviously one of the biggest targets of that season. So Tony was the next selection, and then I picked, and I picked Kim Spradlin. Kim played one of the best all-around games in Survivor history, and I honestly don't think she's getting a lot of recognition for that from the other players on the cast. You look at the preseason interviews, not a lot of people are using Kim as, you know, a person that they are going to try and attack. I think if Kim plays kind of that low-key game, her tribe wins immunities, and then she gets to the merge, I think she has every opportunity from there if she has the numbers to kind of run the table and to kind of, you know, make sure people are doing what she wants to do and do exactly what she did in her original season. Kim Spradlin is my sleeper pick. I don't know if that can, can even constitute as a sleeper pick because she's one of the most dominant winners in Survivor history, but I don't see a lot of people predicting her actually going on to win the whole entire season. But I really, really think she has an opportunity to do that, uh, especially just based off of prior gameplay, how she played in her last season. I think Kim Spradlin is a person to keep your eye on, and I was, I was glad to get her in my uh, second round selection. And then Jay, with his next pick, he took Yule. Yule is a guy that is really likable. He has a great social game. He got to the end, and he played a pretty solid all-around game. Um, I think that there were situations in the season where if he got to the end with a certain player, he wouldn't have won. But uh, Yule is definitely a guy that I can see having a good game just based off of social play. I don't think this season is going to be based a whole lot on social play, though. I think it's going to be based a lot on big moves and who plays the best game of Survivor. And uh, Yule isn't the best gamer on this cast. Uh, not by far, I don't think he is. And I think that he might struggle to get those votes based off of you know, winning strategy, how he won the game. I just, I don't see it in this season that's full of gamers. And yeah, Yule, I think, is a guy that can coast in the end based off of basing good relationships and uh, making those kind of moves, you know, good relationship moves, getting in the majority. But as far as making the moves necessary to win survivors winner, Survivor winners at war, I don't think he makes that move. I don't think he makes that jump. So in, in Wyatt... With his back-to-back -back picks in the second and third round. To close out the second round, he took a guy that I was really shocked. And that's Ben. Ben Bombs. You know, heroes versus hustlers. What was it? Heroes versus healers versus hustlers. Uh, a recent winner. Again, another recent winner. He took two of the most recent winners um, in back-to-back -back selections. I think Ben's the guy that goes pre-jury. And doesn't really have a good chance to come back at Edge of Extinction. Um... He didn't have the greatest social game. He was in the majority for a while, but he really relied on finding idols and uh, advantages to keep himself safe in the game. He was really alone for most of the game. And if he doesn't really improve his social game, and I know I just got done saying that I don't think social game is going to be as much of a factor, but I don't think it's going to be that much of a factor towards the end game. So I don't think a lot of people are going to be giving the game to somebody that had a tremendous social game. But in order to get far and be in the majority, Ben's going to have to step his social game up a lot because he didn't really have that in Heroes versus Healers versus Hustlers. So I think he's going to have to step that up in order to, uh, you know, be a winner of this season. I think he's one of the most least likely winners in this cast, which is why I was, you know, kind of shocked he was taken in the second round of this draft. But um, like I said, I think it's a little bit of a recency bias and a guy that hasn't really seen a lot of Survivor in order to really pinpoint who those winners are going to be and uh, who stands a really good chance. But his next pick was another guy that I think is very interesting, and that's Ethan. Ethan Zahn, the oldest winner of uh, any season from this cast. Uh, Survivor Africa, which is season three, I believe, is what he won. And a lot of people are down on Ethan. I think just based off of... You know, his story, I guess, and the fact that, you know, he's an older winner. I think a lot of people aren't going to want to take that to the end because he does have a great story. He's great at talking. He's great at the social game. But again, how much is that going to impact the votes in the season if he's at the end with a gamer? I don't know. So I think Ethan right here is a guy that, you know, I think goes to the jury. I mean, goes to uh, post-jury the merge. I think he is going to be a member of the jury. But I don't see him winning. I don't see him winning just because I think his story's too perfect. His story's too perfect. You don't want to take a guy like that to the end. But that was his uh, third round selection. And Jay's third round selection is Parvati. A girl, I think, out of a lot of women, I think that there is a couple, like two more women. Uh, Kim Spradlin and another girl we haven't talked about. 
uh, yet that I think have the best chance of winning. Parvati is a girl, a woman, that uh, a lot of, you know, Survivor fans and people that come on to Survivor really idolize their game after. She's one of the best game players, you know, from a strategy standpoint with flirting, you know, getting her way, making sure guys are doing what she wants to do. She's a little older now, so she's not going to be able to rely on that strategy as much as she used to. So I think that uh, we're really going to see the game player Parvati show out. And I think she's going to be making some flashy moves. And I think she really has a good chance to be a winner this season. I have her as probably my second my second best chance of winning uh, for females. I think she has a really good chance. So I thought Parvati was a steal in the third round. In my third round selection, I took a person that I'm not necessarily proud of taking. And I don't think I should have took. But uh, the... The numbers were kind of dwindling at that point. So I took Tyson. Uh, Tyson, of course, you know, basically voted himself out one of his prior seasons. He was in Heroes versus, I mean, not Heroes. He was in, yeah, Heroes versus Villains. And, you know, he ended up getting a win in one of his returning seasons. Now, Tyson is a guy that I think probably is going to go pre-jury. But like I said, the numbers were dwindling. Uh, he can't get in his own way. I think that's the biggest thing for Tyson in his gameplay at Winners at War. He cannot get in his own way. If he gets in his own way, he's not going to win the game. It's just as simple as that. Um, he's not a guy I'm high on to win this season, but it's going to be interesting to see him back because as a kid, he was one of my favorite players growing up. It was always a, dream, uh, a treat to see him uh, on that Survivor Island and playing good Survivor gameplay. But again, I don't I don't see it. I don't think so. I don't think he wins, but I was kind of my, my, my hands were kind of tied, and I kind of figured somebody that I drafted later on was going to be there because I didn't think Fitz was going to pass up on a certain player um, again. So Fitz in his third round selection and his fourth round selection with his back-to-back -back picks, he took Sandra, which Sandra, if she wins, like I said, canceled the whole show of Survivor because nobody can uh, nobody can beat the Queen. The Queen stays Queen. That's just how it is. He's the, Sandra's one of his favorite players, if not his favorite player of all time, and it's going to be a joy seeing Sandra uh, competing and playing again. It's going to be an absolute fun time to see her back on the island playing Survivor. I think in Game Changers, she really didn't have that opportunity to play and show who she was because she was such a big target. And I think she does have that big target on her again, just based off of winning twice and being one of the best, if not the best, Survivor player of all time. Uh, she's going to have to put in a lot of work, and we'll see. We'll see what kind of work she puts in in order to try and find herself at the end uh, of this game and winning it. And then in his fourth round, so getting close to the final round, he took Michelle Fitzgerald. I don't see it. <laughs> you know, in these these next couple of uh, these next couple of picks, with the exception, actually, Michelle is basically the only one in this round that I can say I just don't see it, and I don't see her winning. I see her being kind of like uh, Troy Zana Game Changers. You know, getting taken to the end, final three, didn't play that strong of a game, and she ends up you know losing in the final three. You know, that's good because you get there, but it's not good because she ain't a winner, so you ain't going to get your 20 bucks. So I don't see her winning, and uh, I was really surprised Fitz uh, switched up and didn't take Natalie Anderson. Natalie Anderson, I would say, is another one of my female picks that are going to do tremendously well in this season. She did well in her uh, past season when her sister got voted out, and she was really basically playing by herself and really had to navigate her way through the game that way. And I think she did a tremendous job, and hopefully we can see her do another great job and do it all over again in Survivor Winners at War. Uh, her and Parvati, as well as Kim Spradlin, I think are the three strongest women out there, uh, other than Sandra. But I think Sandra has a big target on her chest, so I think uh, Kim Spradlin, Natalie Anderson, and Parvati, all three have really good chances of winning this game. So Natalie Anderson, I think, was a steal for me in this round. And then uh, another steal in the round was Jamin's selection, and that was Adam, Adam Klein. You know, the super fan that ended up going on there and winning the game. You know, he's going to have to kind of go out there and calm down a little bit because, you know, even though he was from a couple seasons ago, being such a super fan and being around all these players that you kind of idolized growing up and really, really loved and you wanted to kind of model your game after. He's got to calm down a little bit. But he's game savvy. He knows what he's doing out there. He's also really good at competition. So, And he's an under-the-radar player. I don't see a lot of people trying to target Adam right off the bat. I think he's going to be a guy 
that is going to perform well, play well, and you know play to the best of his abilities. So I think he was a steal in the fourth round, and Wyatt also got a steal in the fourth round in Danny Boatwright. Danny Boatwright is another player that a lot of people think you know played one of the best games of all time, played a tremendous game in her winning game, and really kind of was in control and was in you know everybody's ear that whole season. Was never threatened, and she was always you know in the know. And I think Danny Boatwright's another female that has a great great opportunity to win this game. Now the first pick of the fifth round was Boston Rob. Boston Rob uh, gets the fifth pick. There's just no way. Uh, we're going to go over Jamin's and Wyatt's as coexisting because it's Boston Rob and, of course, Amber, who's Boston Rob's wife. I think if there's two people that just don't stand a chance winning this season, it's them. And, you know, if they do end up doing well, I think this game's a little bit rigged <laughs> because I just I don't see it. I don't see any world where Rob or Amber get the victory. There's just no way. You can't let either one of them in the jury either. You need to get them gone pre-jury and uh, hope that they all they battle against each, o- against each other in the uh edge of extinction battle to get back in the game in the pre-jury and just have one of them on the jury because you know if you can have a person that's really close to both of them then you can count on getting both of their jury votes you don't want to get both of their jury votes so i'm not surprised that they went last round and then the last two selections were sophie clark from me and denise for fits were the last two selections in our fantasy draft and these are two girls again i could kind of see you know getting to the end kind of a floating sort of game and uh not doing too well and probably not winning the game but ladies and gentlemen i am so super excited to watch survivor winners at war i will be back here giving a full episode recap once i watch the episode and telling you guys what i think about it what went down, what was crazy, what wasn't crazy, and then the next day give out my power rankings for the players remaining in the game and give my Edge of Extinction rankings, which again, it's going to be short because there's only going to be one player on there, unless there's two and I just don't know about it. But again, this is any Survivor uh, fan's dream to watch. So I got to say, I'm very excited. I hope you guys are excited as well. And I can't wait to be talking to you guys about more Survivor. Again, if you guys haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. Um, you make sure you can check all the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks or follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.